In this second session on the Vantage and Fusion Design Center Library, we will address the creation of objects into your library. In our first session, we introduced the library as a way to improve productivity and consistency, and we demonstrated the use of previously created library objects to produce programming tasks into our project file. Up till now, we've concentrated on task objects, but in reality, we can store just about any sort of object in the library. We'll start by introducing a button style, LED style, and keypad style into the library. From a blank project file, I've created a keypad style that is easy touch to with black faceplate on titanium trim, a button style with titanium colored button, and an LED style with Equinox consistent LED colors, white first state and ochre second state. I want to have these available in my library so I can create Equinox consistent Easy Touch 2 keypads which will require all three elements. We will want to organize our objects in the library so that they're easily found. We create a new folder by selecting the folder icon at the top of the library pane and we will change its name to My Styles. In anticipation that we might want to accommodate multiple styles, we'll create a subfolder for our Equinox consistent styles. Now we simply drag and drop the three styles into the subfolder. Now let's create a new file. We'll insert our three styles into this new file. And now as we create a new keypad it will adopt the style so that we have the keypad design that we desire. Admittedly, this is a simple example of placing objects in the library. These are simple objects without dependent objects, so it is a very straightforward thing to do. You will observe that inserting these simple objects did not require a wizard, as in session one, when we inserted task objects. But the real power of the library is found in simplifying complexity by allowing us to store our complex tasks, timers, and even whole keypads for future use. When we insert an object with dependent objects into the library, we'll be asked for bits of information that will then be presented back through the wizard when we use those library objects. The example we will show here is of everyday exterior lighting timers. We've created three timers to manage exterior lighting automatically. One to turn lights on in the evening, one to change lighting levels for the duration of the night, and one to turn lights off in the morning. We will demonstrate storing the first of these three to the library. I've created a folder already where I will store all three timer objects. The first step is to drag and drop the evening timer onto the target subfolder. A create library object dialog opens which will lead to creation of the wizard presented when we will use the object. All dependencies that need to be satisfied before we're finished creating the object show in red. We start by giving the object a name. which satisfies the first line, which now turns from red to black. But we also have the opportunity to provide some information and instruction on use of this object. We'll type in some text here. Now, we need to satisfy the controlled objects, which in this case are the lights we will be turning on in the evening. The controlled objects are shown from the initial project. As we insert this in future project files, we will need to select the exterior lights to turn on, so we leave the Select in Wizard option and provide instruction that will be presented back through the wizard. Now that we've created the object, we can use it in any project. 
I'll delete the original timer with its task and we'll recreate that from the library. We see that the instructions and information that we typed into the dialog now appear in the wizard and that we can select the appropriate loads for the specific project. We've demonstrated insertion of both simple and somewhat complex objects into the library. We can increase in complexity storing entire keypads or TPT pages, etc. But just remember that the more complex we get, the less likely the object will have application in other projects. But the more we can get into a single object where it does have application, the less work it will be to reproduce a copy. This concludes our session on creating library objects. Be sure to also watch our final session, which will address library file management.